hear your favorite NFL legends sharing their stories and insights every week right here on Thursday Night Tailgate with Chris Mascaro and Bob Lazari. Take it away, guys. Right, the door is locked. There's no way out. And now back with us on Thursday night, tailgate is former Patriots Pro Bowl running back Tony Collins to help us go through our picks for this weekend's playoff matchups. Hey, Tony, how are you tonight? Hi, Tony. Doing fantastic. How are you doing, Chris and Bob? Uh, we're great. Thank we're great. you, Tony. So, guys, looking back to last week, we all had a terrible Saturday, but a good Sunday. So we at least we ended the, the weekend on a good note because uh, we all incorrectly picked the, the, the Chiefs over the Titans and the Rams over the Falcons in the Saturday game, so stocked down all three of us on that. But came back strong, like I say, on Sunday. We were all correct in the Jags over the Bills and the Saints over the Panthers. So you know what, Tony, you know what I decided is since we have no hope of catching Bob for the regular season <laughs> title, I'm, wipe, I'm wiping the records clean for the postseason because once you get this far, really, the regular season records don't matter. It's all about what you do in the postseason. So we're all two and two, and we all got a clean start. So we're, we're back in it, Tony. That's what I say. All right. I'm, I'm with you, Chris. I'm with you on that. I'm with you. <laughs> I appreciate you. All right, fellas, let's get into the divisional round. And our first game this weekend is going to be the Saturday afternoon game with the 11-6 and six Falcons going to the 13-3 and three Eagles. The Falcons are a three-point road favorite. Las Vegas clearly has no love for Nick Foles, and the over-under is 41. So, Tony, can Nick Foles step up and be the Nick Foles from 2013 when he had 27 touchdowns and two interceptions to help the Eagles win? Or is he going to be the Nick Foles we saw two weeks ago against the Cowboys when he was 4 for 11 for 39 yards and an interception and pushed them to a loss? Who do you think wins this game? I do not trust Nick Foles, man. I just don't trust him. I, I, he looks like he's not uh, comfortable back there. I watched him play, uh, I think, the, the, their last game of the season and uh, didn't look good at all. And so I, I think Atlanta can I – mean, well, not Atlanta. Who, who, who are they playing? <laughs> they <are> play- <laughs> yes, they are playing Atlanta. You were right. They are playing Atlanta, right? They are playing Atlanta, yeah. yeah. I think Atlanta can beat him, man. I really do. I, I, you know, it, it depends on what the weather is like. If, if it's a blizzard in, in Philadelphia, it, it may cause us some problems. But if, if the weather is good, I'm going with Atlanta. I think Atlanta can, can win this game. Uh, and we'll, we'll go with 27 to 21, Atlanta. All right. Bob, what do you think? I think Tony's right. I think Foles, uh, at this point of the year, he's, he's had his day in the sun, but uh, I just don't think he's had enough snaps throughout the year to really – this is a huge game. You're going against a, uh, a former Super Bowl team here, and uh, it seems like Matt Ryan is starting to uh, – well, the whole team has got a lot to prove, I think. And it was said that Ryan and – a guy like uh, Julio Jones are a little banged up, but they will play, and I think they're going to be just fine. And uh, I don't think any, they, they're going to have an answer for Julio Jones. And uh, Matt Ryan, uh, they made a believer out of me last week, guys. So uh, I'm going to go Falcons uh, winning this game 30-20. All right. And, you know, and, and like you guys, I wish I, I could think that Nick Foles could step up and, and continue to lead the Eagles on and you know to a Super Bowl, but I don't either. His best game was against a really bad Giants team. He threw for four touchdowns. But even at that, he only threw for 237 yards in that game. You look at his last two against Oakland and Dallas, he, you know, less than 50% completion percentage, one touchdown, two interceptions. Falcons' defense has played really well. They're ninth overall, eighth in, you know, in the average points allowed. So, you know, they're they're doing a great job. The Falcon defense has, has turned it up. So, you know, I think – I'm with you guys. I, I like uh, I like uh, Matt Ryan. I like uh, Julio Jones to figure something out. It's going to rain, right? So they're going to have a wet ball. So you know who knows what can happen with some turnovers. But I think Matt Ryan, you know, is going to be able to do just enough to get the Falcons back in the NFC Championship game. I'm taking the Falcons as well. I think it's going to be close. I like them 20 to 17. Our second game is the 10 and 7 Titans going to the to Tony's 13 and 3 Patriots. The Patriots are a whopping 13 and a half point home favorites, and the over under is 48. So Tony, the Titans upset the Chiefs last week. Could they catch a Patriots team kind of sleepwalking through this game, looking ahead to a potential rematch with the Steelers? That is not going to happen. Uh, I think Belichick will uh, come up with a scheme to stop that running attack and. Will make uh, make the quarterback throw the ball, and uh, that's going to hurt him a little bit. So, 
Uh, I'm going to go with that 13-point spread. I'm going to go 28-14, uh, Patriots. All right. Bob, what do you got? Yeah, there's no way the Titans can win this game. Uh, guys, they haven't won since they were the Houston Oilers up in Foxborough. And this is Foxborough in January. I think the Patriots are sick of hearing about all the so-called bickering that's been going on, and they have something to prove. I think Brady uh, has been average his last few games. I think he's going to come out, and they're, they're just going to they're going to take no prisoners in this game. I, I think it's going to be the blowout of the week. I'm going to do the Tony Collins blowout special right here. Patriots 35-13. Wow, 35-13. Mm-hmm. All right. <laughs> now, fellas, I, I think the Patriots are ripe for an upset. I don't think the Titans have enough offense to pull it off. You know, if you're the Titans – what you got to do, you got to ride the running game, right? Derrick Henry last week, 156 yards against the Chiefs, and now the Chiefs' defense was 25th against the run. But guess what? The Patriots are 20th against the run. So, you know, he's going to need to have a repeat performance of that and just chew up clock to keep this game closer than Vegas thinks it's going to be. On the opposite side, the Titans' defense was 25th against the pass, so that's never a good thing when you're facing Tom Brady. Now, the Titans finished fifth in sacks, and we all know the secret to beating the Patriots is sacking Tom Brady early and often, get him concerned about the pass rush, kind of get him off his game a bit. So, you know, if all of those things came together for the Titans, they ran the ball well, they stopped Deion Lewis, you know, running the ball, they sacked Brady several times, they could win. They're not going to do it, but they could. I think this game is, you know, going to be closer than what everybody thinks. I'm going the opposite way of you, Bob. I think it's a close game. I think the Patriots end up winning, but I think they're only going to do it by four. I got them winning 24 to 20. We've got our next guest, Jonathan Wells, hanging on the line. Going to get to Jonathan here in just a minute. Our next game is uh, the 11 and 6 Jaguars coming to my 13 and 3 Steelers. The Steelers are a seven point home favorite. The over under is 41. So, Tony, how much of a whooping are my Steelers going to put on the Jags? <laughs> I, I heard Antonio. Not that I'm Antonio, leading you anywhere. I heard Antonio Brown was looking good in practice, man. So, man, I, I think Pittsburgh can. Can can do some, but I'm gonna tell you, man. I I like the Jacksonville team, even though they played terrible last week against Buffalo. Only I think they only scored ten points. They got to score more than ten points to uh, to beat Pittsburgh, and I don't think they will. So got to go with Pittsburgh, and you're gonna get the blowout, thirty-five to fourteen, Pittsburgh. All right, from your lips to God's ears, Bob. What do you think? <laughs> Yeah, I, I think the worst thing that could happen was Jacksonville winning earlier in the year, and uh, they don't even need bulletin board material. I mean, Roethlisberger, that was the game. Obviously, he was kind of down on his ability and everything, but so much has happened since then. But I think it still sticks in their craw how they lost that game, and uh, this is a different story, different team. Um, it's January, it's playoffs, they're in Pittsburgh. Yeah, Steelers uh, 27-16. All right. And so, guys, you know, to your point, Bob, the last time these guys played was all the way back in week five. The Jags blew out the Steelers 30-9 to thanks to five uh, Roethlisberger interceptions, two of which they returned for touchdowns. So that's not going to happen again. Le'Veon Bell only rushed the ball 15 times for 47 yards in that game. That's not going to happen again. He's going to get the ball a lot more this time around. Antonio Brown, to Tony's point, is back. Juju Smith-Schuster hadn't emerged yet at that point. He's going to play a big role, and we all saw Last week, the Blake Bortles isn't going to beat anybody. He, he ran for more yards than he threw in that game against Buffalo. So, you know, if the Steelers can stop Leonard Fournette, and he had a down game last week, only 57 yards rushing, I think the Steelers are going to be fine. So I'm with you guys. I like my boys to win that game. I've got a 27-17. to 17. Our last game is the 12-5 and five Saints going to the 13-3 and three Vikings. The Vikings are a four-and-a-half point home favorite. The over-under is 46-and-a-half. Tony, so which which team is going to or which city is going to wake up on Monday in a bad mood? New Orleans or Minneapolis? Oh uh, man, now this is going to be a good game, man. It, I think this is probably be the best game of of, of all of 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 all the games this weekend coming up. So, um man, Minnesota tough defense uh, still still not really convinced with their quarterback, but their defense is what was 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 jumps out at you. Uh, playing at home, uh, New Orleans, I, I just don't think they can go up there and beat them. So I'm going with Minnesota. Minnesota winning 27 to 17. All right. Bob, is Tony right? I'm going to go against Tony in this one. I, I just, uh, the way Breeze is playing, uh, a guy who completed 72% of his 
passes this year, which is phenomenal at any age. But uh, and and they're they're the double headed monster at running back. Their, their offense is clicking. Uh, Breeze made one mistake at the end of that game last week, but I mean he he's he's clicking. I just think they're on a roll and. And uh, you're going to see them and the uh, Falcons play for the championship in the, NF- in the NFC. So, I mean, yeah, New Orleans goes up there and keeps the offense going and, and wins a close one. I'm going to say 30-27 New Orleans. All right. And, uh, Tony, I'm with you. I'm not, I'm, just, I'm not a Case Keenum believer with the Vikings. You know, this is going to be his first postseason start, so there's that. In his last three games, he's averaging under 200 yards passing. This season he's thrown for over 300 yards in a game twice. He's thrown for only 250 in a game six times, and he's thrown for under 200 yards five times. So he's not going to put a team on his back and carry them to a win. Latavius Murray, he ended up leading the Vikings in rushing yards this season after Dalvin Cook went down, but he only rushed for 100 yards in a game twice, and one of those was the season ender against the Bears. So I don't see this offense you know, coming to life for the Vikings, and, you know, now, Tony, to your point, the Vikings defense, outstanding all season, except the last two games. You know, they gave up 31 points a game over those last two, but in seven of their 16 games, the defense allowed 10 or fewer points, so they're playing really well. Um, but uh, I just, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not a believer of their offense. I like the Saints. You know, they've got their most balanced team probably ever, right, with their running game, running game and passing game, both ranked fifth in the league this season, and they were fourth in average points scored at 28. Their, their defense, middle of the road against the run in the pass, you know, both ranked 15th. But, you know, the Saints defense isn't awful, and the Vikings offense isn't great. So I think that's an advantage to the Saints, and I expect, you know, uh, the, the Vikings defense to do a good job against Drew Brees, but they're not going to completely shut him down. And with how well they're running the football, I'm liking the Saints. I'm with you, Bob. I'm taking the Saints 27 to 20. Tony, before we let you go, remind our listeners about the great things you do helping kids uh, get off to college. TonyCollinsFoundation.org. Go to that website, man. We're doing a lot of things. That going up, uh, going this year, going uh, uh, for our 10th anniversary. So really excited about helping kids go off to college. Very good. Tony, thanks for your time again tonight. We look forward to catching up with you again next week. In between now and then, as always, all the best to you and your family, my friend. Have a great week, Tony. You, got, you guys have a great one. All right, take care, Tony. Take care. That is Patriots Pro Bowl running back Tony Collins. We're going to get to our next guest, Jonathan Wells, on the other side of this quick station ID.